This is News 8 Now, this morning. We're a very low spending district. Um, we are the lowest uh, in assessed uh, taxes right now in our area at $5.91 per um, thousand. So the impact to our patrons is uh, flat to neutral. I mean, people make mistakes in life, so I do think it's right that they should have that opportunity to have a say in what goes on in their state or in their country or where they live, you know. Holman is a growing community and I know that we have children in the district that have special needs and need access to the park structures like this. We don't have any that are available. Having this in this location with the adequate parking and the, the big space, uh, the flat ground is very important for us. Good morning. That was your eye opener. What some of the stories we'll be covering this morning. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. I'm Sophia Pullman. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is Wednesday, March 8th. March is flying by. It is. But the snow is still here. It's still here. It's still <laughs> sticking around. We got another round coming yes. in, it looks like, here as we head into tomorrow. So. Unfortunately, we'll probably see some pretty good snowfall accumulations out of this thing as we head into tomorrow and early Friday. We'll get to that in a bit, but uh, right now, though, looking pretty dry. Lots of cloudy skies, though, that continue to move in from the west, and even a few snow flurries here as well that are not too far away. But it does look like that the indications are, at least, that the snow flurries and showers that we currently see to the west of us are going to be mainly staying off to the west. Could affect portions of our western communities, though, later this afternoon. But as of right now, you can see those thick, cloudy skies moving in from the that westerly direction there and the snow showers again not too far away. We got current temperature readings into the upper 20s to low 30s. Right now in Eau Claire it's 29. Lacrosse you're currently checking at 30 and Sparta just to the east at 29 degrees. Overall mostly cloudy skies continue to linger this morning followed by just complete overcast as we head into this afternoon and pretty much throughout the rest of the day as well with temperatures uh, well into the 40s. Keep in mind we do have these winter storm watches in effect here for those highlight spots uh, for some of these areas until 6 a.m. Friday morning. Heavy snow is possible during this time and snowfall accumulations also likely with wind gusts up to 35 miles an hour at times here too. So that will make uh, hazardous driving conditions likely here as well. We'll break down more of these details with this upcoming winter storm coming up in the full weather forecast in just a bit. Sophia. Thanks, Derek. Let's get to some news this morning. Up north in Chippewa Falls, police said a child made multiple 911 calls to dispatch on Tuesday. Police say they received nine six calls and heard children laughing and saying profanities on the other end of the line. One call, the child said there was a ch shooter in the Chippewa Falls High School's lunchroom, which was quickly confirmed the call was false. Police say they found the child making the calls. Officials say the child is too young to be charged with any crimes. Quality career planning, maintenance and safety. Those are some of the areas the Toma District has promised to maintain if their referendum passes. The district is asking voters to exceed the revenue limit by $2.5 million over the next four years. The money will help offset budget deficits and increase per student spending. The district superintendent, Dr. Mike Hansen, says this change will have little to no impact on taxpayers. We're a very low spending district. Um, we are the lowest uh, in, in assessed uh, taxes right now in our area at $5.91 per um, uh, thousand. So the impact to our patrons is uh, flat to neutral. Toma isn't the only school going to referendum multiple times. During last November's midterms, Toma was one of 80 school referendums on the ballot asking voters for school funding. It, it is uh, um, a difficult time uh, dealing with uh, things that are really well beyond our control, but uh, this is one mechanism that districts uh, have been using to meet the challenging budget um, scenarios that were dealt with. The district's last four-year referendum created new positions and hired people to fill them, including five special ed positions, two elementary counselors, and a high school math teacher. The new referendum will be on the April 4th ballot. 
The Sparta Area School District is inviting the community to talk about the future needs of students. Today, district leaders are hosting a community engagement workshop at the high school auditorium. Anyone is invited to attend. A tour of the high school starts at 6 p.m., followed by a discussion on other facilities. Switching gears to lacrosse. If you're interested in learning more about the lacrosse school district referendum, the school district is holding an informational session about its upcoming operational referendum. The district is asking for a six year increase and extension of its 2018 operational referendum. Anyone can attend the session at Logan Middle School on Thursday. It starts at 630 p.m. There's more information on the lacrosse school district's website. A bowl of soup and a vote can get your next idea going, at least in Viroqua. The Viroqua Chamber of Commerce held its second soup event of this year. This year, community members voted to support the Okuch Mountain Club. The club received around $400 from the event, and the club's founder says she's grateful for the opportunity to kickstart a hiking club in the community. It was amazing. I'm super appreciative of the Viroqua Chamber for doing these events and just engaging with the community and giving us a place to have our ideas out and support that. Meyer says she'll use the funds to get the hiking club registered as a nonprofit. Meyer says she also plans on having workshops to teach people about nature. Four members of Great Rivers United Way, it's a time to welcome new members and say goodbye to some old ones. The local area nonprofit held its annual Live United Awards Night on Tuesday. Members and supporters that contributed to the community and the nonprofit were recognized for their work. A total of five awards were handed out. Great Rivers has 27 partner agencies and helps fund over 50 local programs. A new health care clinic is opening up in downtown La Crosse. Leaders at Viaro cut the health rib Viaro Health, excuse me, cut the ribbon on its first primary care clinic on Tuesday. It's open to anyone for preventative care, behavioral health services, and alternative therapies. The clinic will allow payments to be made through insurance, Medicare, Medicaid and cash. Associated with the Weber Group, the CEO of the company says they wanted to bring more health care choices to La Crosse. We wanted to establish just another option for um, accessibility, affordability, and a more integrated model of health care that delivers services not only to the direct individual and family, but even for groups and businesses. The clinic is located on Pine Street and has eight exam rooms as well as imaging and lab services. A big donation is helping bring in all abilities part closer to reality. The Holman Area Foundation presented the North American Squirrel Association with a $10,000 check on Tuesday. Tuesday's check helped boost the project to the $100,000 mark. The playground will be in the Remington Hills Park in Holman. Project leaders say it's the perfect place to have an accessible playground since the nearest ones are on the south side of La Crosse or in Toma. Holman is a growing community and I know that we have children in the district that have special needs and need access to, to park structures like this. We don't have any that are available. Having this in this location with the adequate parking and the, the big space, uh, the flat ground is very important for us. NASA's goal is to have enough funding to break ground next spring and to open the park by the summer of 2024. If you would like to donate, we posted a link on our website. That's news8000.com. Still ahead on your morning news, the new Minnesota law allowing those with felonies to vote. We have the details. And why more airlines allowing families to sit together at no extra cost. That is coming up. For now, we're sp sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. It was a day of celebration for one man in Minnesota. Born in 1917, Floyd Skinner has lived through two world wars, two pandemics, and now 106 birthdays. On Tuesday, his retirement home held a Floyd Fest to celebrate his life. Staff and members of the retirement home wore the color yellow, since that is Floyd's favorite color. When it comes to the secret to a long life, healthy life, Life, Floyd was a man of few words. He said to not smoke and continue breathing in fresh air. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning after the break.
Skies continue to look uh, mainly cloudy as we progress throughout the day so far. A few snow showers exist off to the west of us. Those really should not bother us too much, though. High temperatures expected to reach the low 40s this afternoon in La Crosse. On Alaska, though, you're looking at a high of 46. Same here for you in La Crosse. High temperatures uh, reach 43 in New Albin, 43 as well in Stoddard. 46, though, a little bit further north to the, to the north in, in La Crescent. 41 in Arcadia today and 39 in Mondovi. High temperatures will reach the upper 30s, though, across the Chippewa Valley come this afternoon. Dog walking conditions looking mostly cloudy for the morning, afternoon and evening looking mainly cloudy though. Let's get a check now on your school cast uh, starting with the bus stop forecast this morning. 32 degrees and mostly cloudy skies for us to work with this morning, followed by cloudy skies as we head into the afternoon hours today with temperatures reaching 46 degrees as we head into those afternoon hours. Now stay tuned because coming up in just a few minutes we'll talk about your full weather forecast and break down more details of this upcoming winter storm expected to affect us as early as tomorrow. In our consumer news this morning, two companies are recalling their eye drop products over concerns that they're not sterile. Pharmaceutical USA is recalling its purely soothing 15% MSM drops. The product could be contaminated and cause vision problems and injury. The company says there haven't been any reports of injuries. Apotex is also recalling their solution because of cracks in bottle caps. Both companies say people who have them should stop using them immediately. Apple is introducing a new iPhone 14 and 14 Plus color just in time for spring. Yellow joins the lineup of black, white, red, blue, and purple. Apple is also releasing spring-themed watch bands and silicone iPhone cases. You can pre-order the yellow phones beginning Friday. General availability begins March 14th. Uber wants to make it easier for consumers at the airport to customers, excuse me, at the airport to find their ride. The company said it's adding step-by-step -step instructions in the Uber app to help guide people through airports as they head to the pickup area. The instructions will also have photos. Uber says the new feature will be available for more than 30 airports around the world. The company also says this will reduce traffic congestion and idle time for drivers at the airport curb. Staying at the airport, it's getting a little easier and cheaper for families to travel with children. More airlines are dropping family seating fees amid growing criticism from the federal government. Cole Higgins explains why more airlines are bowing down to pressure. More airlines taking action amid soaring pressure from the federal government about dropping so-called junk fees. I'm expecting that the rest of the airlines who have yet to announce that they're getting rid of them will soon be announcing that in the few, next few weeks. Scott Kyes, founder of the flight deal website Going, says family seating fees could one day be a thing of the past. Alaska Airlines is joining a growing list of carriers now guaranteeing your family will sit together and they won't charge you for it. It comes as the Transportation Department releases a new online dashboard, allowing travelers to see which airlines charge and don't charge families to select seats next to each other. The Biden administration has really been waging a war on junk fees since the State of the Union. American and Frontier Airlines have also rolled out similar family seating policies, guaranteeing children will be seated next to an accompanying adult without a fee. And United Airlines recently announced a policy update as well, but stopped short of offering a guarantee. Travel experts say it's a welcome travel trend for families who have been forced to pay fees, often adding up to hundreds of dollars per trip. Even if you were traveling with young children, if you didn't want to pay the oftentimes, you know, $50 or more per person to pick your seats, you then were at risk of getting separated on the plane. For Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. That is it for your morning consumer news. Let's check in with Derek and today's forecast. All right, thanks so much for that, Sophia. We are looking at a pretty cloudy start here so far to the day with current conditions in La Crosse at 30 degrees. We are looking at visibilities, though, looking good around 10 miles. South-southeast winds very light at around 3 miles an hour. Current conditions to the north in Eau Claire are currently at 29 degrees with a feel-like value of 24 when you factor in the wind chill up there. We're looking at mainly cloudy skies that continue to move in across the area. Notice a few snow flurries here positioned just off to the west of us and also some snow showers associated with this trough of low 
pressure that we are watching just off to the west of us with current readings into the upper 20s to low 30s for as far as temperatures go as you head out the door this morning. Now we will be looking at those uh, readings into the low 30s as we progress throughout much of the morning, followed by the low 40s by noon today. And then we are looking at cloudy skies with temperatures at 42 degrees late this afternoon. As we head into early this evening, temperatures will drop to about 38 degrees while still remaining very cloudy and forecast highs will be into the upper 30s across the Chippewa Valley. But across our central and southern communities, we're looking at highs today into those low to mid 40s. So Sky Tracker currently showing a mainly cloudy look and we're going to continue to remain this way as we progress throughout much of the morning. Now by this afternoon, everybody is going to be looking completely overcast. A few snow showers and flurries that could affect portions of our western communities are possible as we head into those later afternoon hours. A lot of this is going to stay mainly to the west and a lot of us will just be dealing with mainly cloudy skies even as we head into tonight. All right, so we have winter weather alerts in effect here for portions of the north central United States as well as portions of the western United States here as well near the uh, mountain western regions. And this is all associated with a developing winter storm system that's also expected to impact us across the upper Midwest, including us here in the Cooley region. As you can see, we got winter storm watches posted here until 6 a.m. Friday, and that's because we're talking about heavy snowfall becoming a possibility. That will lead to some pretty significant uh, snowfall accumulations in some spots as well, along with gusty conditions around 35 miles an hour possible in some of those higher gusts associated with this developing low pressure system that we have uh, positioned to the south. And you can see we'll be on the north side of this low pressure system here by tomorrow, uh, meaning that we're going to be talking about some snowy weather here starting tomorrow afternoon and then really just continue here. It looks like as we head into tomorrow night as well. Now, as we take you into early Friday, it looks like a lot of this will be pushed off well to the east as that low continues to move away from us, but still some leftover scattered snow showers are still possible even into the early morning commute for Friday morning. Snowfall accumulations are anywhere between four to eight inches for many spots, but two to four inches for you folks around the Eau Claire area and around the Chippewa Valley in general. So the further north that you go or further north that you live, the less snow that you are expected to see. So your eight day forecast does show us that we will be keeping those snow chances in the forecast through at least Friday morning, mostly cloudy for Saturday. So we get a break in the snow, but it will be much colder though behind the system moving through another chance of snow is possible on Sunday. We'll keep our eyes on that. And also heading into next week, mainly cloudy, still not really a whole lot of sunshine, unfortunately, to work with with highs into the 30s through Tuesday. Then we warm up into the low 40s by Wednesday, low temperatures mainly in the 20s. Stay with us. We're back with much more news and weather still to come on News 8 Now this morning. We're taking a quick break with a look at what happened on this day in history for March 8th. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Morning Blitz. Tomorrow, the West Salem Panthers girls basketball team will make their way to Green Bay to compete in the girls state basketball tournament. Now, this is the first time that the girls team will be at state since 1997, but this team has plenty of state experience. Six players on the roster have parents or siblings that have competed or coached in a total of 17 WIAA state tournament games including sophomore McKenna Ely, whose mom played for the Panthers last time they made it to state in 97. Andrea, who's a fourth grade teacher at West Salem, says attending the state tournament as a mom and a fan will be much different than when she was a player, but she says it's gonna be an awesome experience. I think I'm definitely gonna be like that nervous, excited, um, just telling her to enjoy it. I wanna enjoy it too. And just to be able to be there to support West Salem and obviously once a Panther, always a Panther. So I'm excited. Now McKenna is standing directly in her mom's shoes and much like her mom, McKenna takes a lot of pride in her defense, blocking shots, getting rebounds and shutting down the other team. But maybe the most important thing McKenna learned from mom is to have fun. She's, she has always told me just to like remember the experience and just enjoy it and just like be in the moment just because there's such like you know, like one of a kind moments and I'm just trying to like soak it all in and just enjoy it. I was just really excited that I got to relate to that experience with my mom since we've always kind of bonded over basketball and now I get to relate even more just by going to state and relating to her experiences. Well you can check out McKenna and the rest of the Panther squad in their first state tournament game on Thursday but no, they're not the only two teams playing. The Aquinas girls also playing on Thursday and then on Friday the Blair Taylor Wildcats will compete at state for the first time ever. Rob will be in Green Bay later this week with all the coverage. Well, yesterday I had a quick Aaron Rodgers segment where I spoke about his future. 
is still unknown. Well, today there were reports that Rodgers was in official talks with the New York Jets, and that would only be able to happen if the Packers granted him permission to do so. And according to ESPN's Rob Domofsky said, the Jets owner, general manager, and head coach all flew from New York to California yesterday to meet with Rodgers in person to try to convince him to play for the Jets. And then if Rodgers says he will play for them, the Packers and the Jets will still have to come to terms on a trade deal. That'll do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. Breaking overnight, one person has been detained in connection to the deaths of two American citizens killed in Matamoros, Mexico. The person detained was identified as 24-year-old Jose N. On Tuesday, we learned two of the Americans kidnapped while in Mexico died while in captivity. The others, sur two others survived. One was shot in the leg. The other was physically unharmed. Today is International Women's Day, and this year is a special one for female boxers in Cuba. After decades of restrictions, they are now allowed to compete in tournaments. While men's boxing is a sport the island dominated, men, women's boxing did not get the same stamp of approval from the government. This meant women boxers had to train on their own and were unable to compete in tournaments at home or abroad. In our medical news this morning, an alarming new study shows more children are dying from poisonings related to opioids. Stephanie Stahl has more from Philadelphia. The nation's opioid epidemic is having deadly consequences for children. A new study in the journal Pediatrics shows opioids are the most common substances leading to fatal poisonings in young children. In 2018, they accounted for 52% of deaths in children five and younger, a significant increase from 24% in 2005. Even small amounts of an opioid, just because kids are smaller um, and weigh less, can have a much greater effect. It can change how they're able to breathe. It can change their mental status, and that can potentially be fatal. Dr. Christopher Gaw authored the study and says within the past decade, children have been exposed to new opioid sources like heroin, fentanyl, and drug treatments like methadone and buprenorphine. At the Poison Center here at Children's Hospital Philadelphia, nurses and pharmacists field 65,000 calls each year. Other common substances, including over-the-counter pain, cold, and allergy medications, are also leading to deadly poisonings. What to do? The center is working with communities to help keep opioids and other drugs out of the reach of children in the first place. Supervision is helpful, but it's not the end-all be-all because kids are quick and poisonings can happen in a split second. So what we recommend is that parents and families should focus on preparedness and prevention. They should keep medications and other toxic substances out of sight and out of mind. In fact, three-fifths of poisoning deaths happened in the child's home, a wake-up call for parents and caregivers to keep their kids safe. Stephanie Stahl, CBS News, Philadelphia. Researchers also recommend if you have opioids in the home that you keep the medication naloxone in, a in the house, which can be a life-saving drug if the child has an opioid-related exposure. The United Nations says people around the world are living longer. The organization's population division says life expectancy is not only increasing globally, but the gap between highly developed regions and the rest of the world is gradually closing. They say some of the reasons people are living longer include global progress in ensuring access to health care, sanitation, and education. The global life expectancy for men and women is 71 years old. In Minnesota, anyone convicted of a felony no longer has to complete probation or parole to vote. That opens the voting booth to 50,000 Minnesotans who didn't have a say in their democracy. Governor Walls signed the bill Friday morning. News 8 Now's Emily Hogan explains why supporters say it's about time. A vote is a voice. If you really want to make change in your community or your state, you have to be politically involved. For years, felons on probation or parole in Minnesota did not get to use that voice. I said my name and I, they turned the page and there's this big red mark all the way across, you know, my name and they said I couldn't vote. And, you know, it's just, I don't know, it just felt embarrassing. In Winona, Danny Lund and Nikki Hennessy were two of them. You know, I go work a full-time job, I pay taxes, which in turn does pay 
these people that we vote into office. So I don't understand the logic behind why someone currently on parole or probation, why they shouldn't be allowed to vote. That changed for Danny on Friday. Today is a good day for democracy. After years of work, 50,000 previously convicted Minnesotans can now vote. That was a relief for advocate and ex-felon Randy Anderson. I just took a big breath. I was like, oh my God, this is finally done. So let's just say we, we impact 25% of those people by that. To me, that's huge. That's a, I mean, people that feel like they're part of something again. Supporters say it's a win for everyone. I think it'll probably help a lot of people that are coming out of prison that are trying to change their life. And at the Winona Recovery Center, Hennessy believes in second chances. They're people. They're no different than we are. They're, they're no different than anybody else, anybody who is not on felony probation. You know, just they made mistakes in their lives, too, that they, you know, they just made mistakes that, that shouldn't put them out of the right to vote. In Winona, Emily Haugen, News 8 Now. Minnesota is now one of over 20 states that allows people out of prison to vote. Convicted felons cannot vote in Iowa or Wisconsin until their sentence is finished. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz also signed a bill into law Tuesday that allows undocumented people in the state to get a driver's license. It's a law that has spent 20 years in the making. Thanks to the new bill, more than 80,000 immigrants who live in Minnesota can now receive a driver's license. One Minnesotan received his state ID 25 years ago when he moved to Minnesota from Mexico, which was the last time this law was in place. He's happy that his loved ones can get one too. I know so many people, I have friends and actually family members, brothers, that they don't have the opportunity before to get a license. So now this is a huge win for our community. Critics say they're worried the law will lead to illegal voting and illegal enrollment in state programs. People aren't allowed to get IDs under the law until October. Back here in Wisconsin, state Republicans could vote to block Governor Tony Evers' new vaccine policy. Under the new policy, there would be tighter chickenpox vaccine mandates, and students will be required to get vaccinated twice against meningitis. Right now, the health department requires students to get vaccinated against chickenpox in order to attend kindergarten through sixth grade. There are no vaccinations requirements for meningitis. The GOP-controlled legislature is expected to vote on the policy in the upcoming days. A Wisconsin man can't thank first responders enough. They rescued him and his dogs after they fell through the ice on a frozen pond Sunday. Bruce Harrison has the story. Todd Fornis planned to spend Sunday on the couch watching golf. I was cutting wood two days ago with the, from the storm damage and I hurt my back a little bit and then the next day I go swimming. An unexpected dip in this pond trying to save his dogs. You just grabbed this and put it down flat and kind of got on your belly on the middle of it. And yep, and then just pulled myself out there. On body camera video, first responders straining to pull Fornis to shore. What went through your mind when you went through the ice? Um, I don't remember. It was just get to, get to the dogs. Todd says Bo and Stormy know normally not to go on the ice, but they decided to chase two goofy geese, he says, that just didn't fly south this winter. Fornis' partner called 911 and Racine County Sheriff's deputies, a state trooper, and Raymond and Fire Rescue arrived within minutes. Stormy the dog got out on her own, but Bo and Fornis needed an assist. I was tired. Yeah. I was, I was um, not my last breath by any means because I had my, the float with me, but yeah, I was tired. The sheriff's office says Fornis was in the water for about 10 minutes. He says he's fine and grateful. You know, they came out to uh, help. You don't know if uh, they don't know if they might get themselves in trouble. So I I can't thank them enough. And the dogs? Well, Stormy's a little skittish from all the activity Sunday. But Bo, he just wants to play. And fortunately, it appears the geese have finally taken flight. After being rescued, Forns went to the hospital to get checked out and he was treated for minor cuts. 
Oh, well, sir, it's a pretty cloudy start here so far across much of the area here in downtown Lacrosse. You can see those clouds out there. 30 degrees is that uh, temperature with a light south southeasterly wind at around three miles an hour. And here's what you can expect throughout the rest of the morning, mainly cloudy skies with temperatures in the low 30s. And then later today, looking cloudy temperatures into those low to mid 40s. In fact, today in Lacrosse, our high temperatures will reach around 46 so underneath those cloudy skies and overall fairly mild conditions. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles an hour for tonight. We drop down to 29 degrees, still fairly mild though for this time of the year. Still very cloudy here tonight as well with light east winds at around 5 to 10. Driving conditions this morning are looking pretty good. Cloudy skies here to start and those clouds are going to stick around here for the mid hour commute as well. As we take you into this evening, things are still looking very cloudy, but overall pretty dry. But however, that's going to be changing though later this week as we got a winter storm on the way and we'll talk a lot more about that coming up in the full weather forecast, but also coming up in our buzz report. Disney Plus continues to build their lineup of shows. The new documentary coming to the streaming service. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Overall, pretty mostly cloudy start as you can see behind me from City Cam 8 here in downtown La Crosse. We are looking at current conditions looking like this with temperatures at 30 degrees. Visibility though looking crystal clear at around 10 miles. Nearly the same conditions here in Eau Claire, maybe slightly cooler at 29 degrees, but you can see perfect driving conditions here on the roadways here for us to work with this morning. Now things are fairly cloudy as we just saw from City Cam, and you can see here on the satellite and radar picture all the clouds that continue to move in across the area from the west. And you, speaking of the West, you can see that's where currently some of those snow flurries and snow showers do exist, and that is thanks to a weak trough of low pressure here positioned to our west as well. Now we may be looking at some of those snow, snow showers affecting portions of our western communities later today, which we'll get to here in just a bit. Current temperatures are into the upper 20s to low 30s with 28 right now in Sparta and 29 degrees currently further south in Viroqua. Now conditions will remain fairly cool with temperatures at 31 degrees by 7 and by noon still looking cloudy with temperatures at 41, 42 two degrees at four and those cloudy weather conditions will continue even as we head into the early evening hours by eight o'clock. Temperatures will also be dropping to about 38 degrees. Forecast high temperatures in general to the north along the Chippewa Valley today, mainly into the upper 30s, while the rest of us central and south will be mainly into the low to mid 40s here this afternoon. So sky tracker showing those cloudy skies will continue to move across the Cooley region throughout the morning and also as we head into the afternoon hours. In fact, by this point around one o'clock, a lot of locations will just be left over with mainly overcast conditions. Notice the snow showers back to the west not really affecting us too much. Portions of our western counties may see a few snow showers or flurries, but the rest of us looking pretty dry today with mainly cloudy skies lasting into tonight. Maybe a, snow, a slight chance of a snow shower or flurry here for some of us tonight, but overall, again, mainly cloudy. All right, so we have winter weather alerts posted here for our friends here along the north central uh, United States, along off towards the west of us here as well. In some spots, we got winter weather advisories, winter storm watches, and winter storm warnings even. And this is all part of, develop, of a developing storm system that will be affecting us here across the Cooley region. As you can see, we have winter storm watches in effect here for most locations as as well until 6 a.m. on Friday for some spots. Heavy snow possible. Snowfall accumulations are likely with this system and gusty conditions up to 35 miles an hour also possible. And it's all thanks to this developing storm system that we're watching here to the south that is going to cause some snowy weather here for us. And that's because we're going to be on the north side of this low pressure system as it continues to track towards the east. So we're talking some pretty heavy snow starting late uh, tomorrow afternoon and then really just continue into uh, Thursday night, uh, tomorrow night that is as well. Now by Friday morning, we start to see the snow begin to taper here a little bit. Some scattered snow showers are still possible across portions of the area by Friday morning. As far as snowfall totals go, fairly significant totals are possible anywhere between around four to eight inches across much of the area. But the further north that you're located, you're looking at mainly between around two to four inches of snow. So not as high the further north you are. So eight day forecasts are showing that we will be keeping those snow chances in the forecast through Friday. Uh, we'll get a break in the snow though for Saturday followed by more snow chances perhaps from our next system moving in from the west on Sunday. We'll keep our eyes on that. And as we head into next week, uh, mostly cloudy skies will linger. No snow, but temperatures will be colder, mainly into the 30s for much of next week. In 
our buzz report this morning. Snoop Dogg is much more than a rapper. Nearly three years ago, he teamed up with Australian wine brand 19 Crimes to produce a red wine called Snoop Cali Red. And now he's expanding his line to include his first white wine. It is called Snoop Cali Blanc and is available in stores now. This is Snoop's fourth wine he's helped produce. Docu series oh. renovations. It will follow the Hawkeye star and a team of expert builders as they travel the world in search of old vehicles that they can rebuild to serve a new purpose for communities in need. Renovations will be available to stream on Disney Plus on April 12th. TikTok is providing a new way for users to share videos. The company has introduced a new premium feature called Series. It's a way for creators to share longer story collections behind a paywall. Creators will be able to decide how much they want their content to cost, and viewers can purchase it through direct in-video links or a creator's profile. A series can include up to 80 videos that can be 20 minutes long. Right now, the new feature is only available for select users. I am a big TikTok user. You yeah. mentioned you're not. No, that's the. I think that's one of the only social media platforms, that you along with gone on. yeah, along with another one, um, Instagram that I'm okay. not necessarily on. But you know, I'm all about Facebook, Twitter. I don't know. I guess I'm slightly I, old school, but <laughs> I'm a fan of those. I'm not a fan of Snapchat. I don't use Snapchat. I don't use it too much anymore. Yeah. I used to when I was in college, but those you know, those, those days, days are over. Yeah, those days are over. <laughs> Before we head to break, it's time to look at today's look. Who's eight? Uh, that's right. Uh, we're we're going to start off with Griffin today, who is turning eight months, and Griffin is expected, is excited, that is, for his first two teeth. Happy eighth birthday to Savannah. Her favorite color is pink, and her favorite animal, you guessed it, a flamingo. And happy eighth birthday to McKenna. McKenna loves shooting hoops and spending time with family and friends. Happy 80th birthday to Pat. Pat is energetic and has a great sense of humor. Happy 88th birthday to Cheryl. Cheryl loves to garden and crochet. Happy 88th birthday to Myrna. She currently has four great grandchildren with three more on the way this year. Wow. And if you know a special someone that is turning eight months, eight years, 18, 80 or 88 years old, uh, we'd love to feature them here. Just upload their photo to our website, it's news8000.com, and look for that Submit Pictures button underneath the Home tab on our website. Stay with us. We have everything you need to know today in five minutes or less. Your morning news now is next. Time for your morning news now. In Minnesota, someone convicted of a felony no longer has to complete probation or parole to vote. That's thanks to a bill signed by Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. This is a bill that Democrats have pushed for years. Once Governor Walz signed the bill on Friday, 50,000 more Minnesotans were eligible to vote. Danny Lund of Winona was convicted of a felony years ago. He wasn't able to cast a ballot until now. I mean, people make mistakes in life, so I do think it's right that they should have that opportunity to have a say in what goes on in their state or in their country or where they live, you know. Lund says he thinks this is an important opportunity for everyone coming out of prison who is trying to change their life. And supporters say this gives felons a chance to have a part of something again. Quality career planning, maintenance and safety. Those are some of the areas the Toma School District has promised to maintain if the referendum passes. The district is asking voters to exceed the revenue limit by $2.5 million over the next four years. The money will help offset budget deficits and increase per student spending. The district superintendent, Dr. Mike Hansen, says this change will have little to no impact on taxpayers. We're a very low spending district. Um, we are the lowest uh, in, in assessed uh, taxes right now in our area at $5.91 per um, uh, thousand. So the impact to our patrons is uh, flat to neutral. The district's last four year referendum created new positions and hired people to fill them, including five special ed, two elementary counselors, and a high school math teacher. The new referendum will be on the April 4th ballot. 
If you're interested in learning more about the La Crosse School District referendum, the school district is holding an informational session about its upcoming operational referendum. The district is asking for a six-year increase and extension of its 2018 operational referendum. Anyone can attend the session at Logan Middle School on Thursday. It starts at 6.30 p.m. There's more information on the La Crosse School District's website. The Sparta Area School District is inviting the community to talk about the future needs of students. Today, district leaders are hosting a community engagement workshop at the high school auditorium. Anyone is invited to attend. The tour of the high school starts at 6 p.m. followed by a discussion on other facilities. A big donation is helping bring an All Abilities Park closer to reality. The Holman Area Foundation presented the North American Squirrel Association with a $10,000 check on Tuesday. Tuesday's check helped boost the project to the $100,000 mark. The playground will be in the Remington Hills Park in Holman. Project leaders say it's the perfect place to have an accessible playground since the nearest ones are on the south side of La Crosse or in Toma. Holman is a growing community and I know that we have children in the district that have special needs and need access to, to park structures like this. We don't have any that are available. Having this in this location with the adequate parking and the, the big space, uh, the flat ground is very important for us. NASA's goal is to have enough funding to break ground next spring and to open the park by the summer of 2024. If you would like to donate, we posted a link on our website that's news8000.com. And as you head out the door this morning, temperatures are in the low 30s under those mainly cloudy skies. And we're going to be looking cloudy here throughout the rest of the day with high temperatures mainly into the 40s. We'll be at 44 degrees, as a matter of fact, by 3 o'clock today. Winter storm watches are in effect here for some spots until 6 uh, tomorrow morning or Friday morning, I should say. Heavy snow possible with snowfall accumulations. And wind gusts up to 35 miles an hour also possible as this winter storm system moves through. So we're going to start to tap into some of that snow by tomorrow. Now we'll linger into early Friday morning by this weekend, possibly another chance of snow on Sunday and mainly cloudy for much of next week with cooler temperatures on the way. I just got goosebumps. Just by looking of, at yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be so cold. I know, it's going to be cold and snowy here in the next couple of days. Thanks, Derek. Yep. And thank you for watching News 8 Now. Don't forget to keep up with the news of the day on News8000.com. We will have the latest updates to today's top stories on News 8 Now at noon. Have a great day and thank you for watching News 8. We'll see you later.